Hey everybody, Paul with Cichlid Nirvana here. Um, this is the final installment of my series on um, cycling your aquarium. Um, and it's the last part of my explanation uh, of my experiences doing fishless cycle. And where we left off, my fish were just arriving. And so where we're going to start here is me getting my fish and what happened. So my fish arrived. I get my fish acclimated. The second batch of fish that I get, all of them healthy uh, for the most part when I first got them. Um, they looked all healthy, although I did notice one had some what I believe was culminaris and that fish ended up passing away and I ended up having to treat the aquarium and I don't know how I used uh, Seachem's Paragard, and there are some medications you have to be careful that can affect your biological media or your biological uh, filtration and your and your uh, filter. So you got to be careful with that. That's not supposed to affect it. So hopefully it didn't. But so I'm at zero ammonia and nitrite, um, and my bio balls I ordered. Um, oh, they were Pure Evolution something bio balls a 250 milliliter container uh off of amazon is where i found them it's the only place i could find them and i worry that because they're and i did worry because they're not super common that maybe that's just another gimmick i don't know but i got them and i i ended up putting them in my uh cascade on my filter on my uh, canister filter on my 29 gallon and i put them in the, I have a 10 gallon aquarium that's behind me here in my office. I put them just on the bottom since I, it's just a, a sponge filter in there. And I put them in my 75, a lot of them in my 75. So I think that they actually may have helped because when I added all those fish, I didn't have any, you know, I might see a little tiny bit of ammonia, like less than 0.25 parts per million. Um, or the, whatever the lowest level is, I can't remember if it's 0 0.25 or 0.25. Less than that, and nitrites, I would see very little next to nothing um, in there for the first, geez, uh, couple weeks, or first week or so of having them. Maybe a little more. As far as the 29 gallon aquarium and cycling, getting rid of the nitrites, um, it didn't it seem like it made much of an impact, although I wasn't doing, I think at this stage, maybe I started doing some water changes where I was trying to get the nitrite levels low and the nitrates were off the chart by that point. So I was trying to get them a little bit lower. Um, and uh, so things were going well. Um, thought everything was cycled, everything was going great. And then right before I had to go on a business trip, of course, um, I noticed the nitrite levels start to build up and spike. And so, uh, first thing I did was um, took the filters, canister filters off, and took them out, and uh, I cleaned them out. There was lots and lots of fish waste in there. Big mistake people make when cleaning their canister filters. I've read on forums where people don't understand why every time they clean their aquarium, their site, they kill their cycle. What's going on? Um, they use tap water. Don't use tap water. Take aquarium water out and use that to rinse out your sponges. Um, your bio, your biological media, um, like for in my case, my bio home, home ultimate, that shouldn't need to be rinsed out. You should leave that alone. Um, and then I changed changed my uh, filter floss, my uh, water polishing pad, essentially that I create out of polyester filling. Um, and it was filthy, so I thought that may pay, may make a difference, but I did note that the Purigen balls were, or the Pure Evolution bio balls were essentially gone. They had dissolved. Uh, and so that may be part of it. That might be why at first it was keeping up with it and then it didn't. I don't, I don't know. I would help that it would, I hope that it would seed the filter so that this wouldn't happen. But um, it's potential that they did help at first. Um, I'd have to test them again to see um, if they really did make a difference. Um, and I do have um, more in order to test to see if uh, it can help because currently to this day, I have high nitrate. I, I put the filters back in, um, hoping that it would help while I'd be gone. And um, it just, the ammonia is pretty much nothing in the aquarium, uh, but the nitrites are high yet. 
So they talk about the proverbial nitride spike. That's what I'm dealing with. So some may say that my tank wasn't cycled in the first place, but it was consuming all that within 24 hours. I'm positive that it was cycled. I think that I killed it. So learn from my mistakes and don't do that. While I was gone, thankfully I have a wonderful wife who um, would do water changes every day. Would She was treating with SAFE to help um, uh, neutralize that nitrite uh, and take care of it. She kept all the fish alive. To this day, we haven't lost one fish. Um, we did lose a fish from, like I said, out of my my order. One died from Culminaris. We treated for a week and, and kept everyone else alive. They've grown. They're twice the size they were when we first got them. Um, I did recently lose a fish due to my own stupidity. Um, uh, the tank, as you can imagine, all those fish produce a lot of waste. And so I put a, a DIY... Um, water polisher with a maxi jet um, uh, power head and uh, took a plastic bottle that I hooked to it I cut the bottom of the bottle off and then fill it with polyester filling and it sucks the stuff through the polyester filling and it does a fantastic job well uh, I went to replace the filter floss one day and I pulled it off and left and took it out cleaned it filled it back put the new polyester filling was probably only gone for a minute maybe, minute and a half, came back and one of my electric uh, yellow labs had this, I had a small one and he must have got inquisitive and went up to it and he got sucked up in the impeller and it killed him. So I felt horrible about that um, and learned my lesson. Um, so I made a modification to it so that wouldn't happen again. I, I used the strainer and then made, I I modified the bottle so that it would fit over the strainer really tightly so that when I took the bottle off the strainer it would still be there so it wouldn't happen but so we've lost two of the I, I believe we have 37 fish in there now so we made it might add 39 to start with um, which is overstocked I know but so anyway I still have a nitrite problem and we're working on it we have tried multiple things to get that down water changes I'm going to try the bio balls again and see I can get a firm conclusion if the bio balls reduce the nitrite because nothing else has, has worked if they reduce it within a couple days of putting them in I'll know that they do what they say and then I'll have to monitor further to see if I get a spike later so I can confirm that they only work while they're there and they don't help establish something for the future which is what you know they advertise to do so that's my experiences thus far. The other day, finally, after probably seven weeks, maybe, my 29-gallon tank was cycled. There was no nitrite. All of a sudden, we tested it one day again. It was off the charts, and then we tested it, and it was down. I see on forums a lot of people getting discouraged about fishless cycling, and it seems like it's never going to happen. I've been there, trust me, and all of a sudden, just like others say, one day, it's cycled. It just, it's, it seems like it's it just like you flip a switch and that bacteria is established enough to consume all the nitrite. So don't get discouraged. Um, hang in there, be patient, uh, and don't do what I did <laughs> and kill your, your cycle by um, doing too large of a water change. Whenever you're doing water changes for your fish, um, remember that they're used to living in the water parameters that they're in. So if you do too large of a water change and your tap water is drastically different than the, than the conditions in your aquarium, you, it can be shocking to them, stressful for them. So um, be wary of that and, and be wary that chlorine can kill your cycle. Uh, I think that, you know, I've heard pH causing problems for people. I have high pH tap water and I can, uh, pH, you know, is a tricky thing because low pH creates more ammonium, not ammonia. And I think there's the, the bacteria can be a little bit different. So you're going to, when you're cycling your aquarium, see pH fluctuations. You can see that based on the cycle when the, as the cycle is establishing. You don't want to get, have super low pH. You want to keep your pH about 7 because if it swings too much, you can kill your, I've heard of people stalling their cycle where, it just will stop um, and, and, and stay there. So be careful of that. Other than that, um, that's how you fish the cycle. That's my experience so far. Um, like I said, I'm still dealing with, I have an aquarium that's fully cycled and I'm dealing with my 75 that's got some nitrites in it yet. But um, 
I'm fairly certain I know I caused the problem, and uh, hopefully soon it establishes its establishes itself. Thankfully, I haven't lost it, any fish, and uh, from from that, and I'm monitoring for brown blood disease and um, signs of that. They show no signs. I'm keeping it neutralized chemically, which I don't like doing, but you know, and with water changes, which I do like doing, but. Um, I will always keep updating my fish, but for this series, this concludes this series. I hope that um, somebody out there finds it useful for uh, them starting up an aquarium and cycling. Uh, and somebody, I hope somebody gets it, something out of it. Um, give me a, shoot me a like on the video if you liked what you you saw. Um, share it, comment, and uh, if you subscribe to me, I'll keep bringing you content and further info from my experiences and uh, pictures of my uh, and videos of my fish and things like that. So again, thanks. Uh, have a good one and I will talk to everybody later.